Hey everyone, welcome back to Savor Local Eateries, the Southern Edition. I am so excited for tonight's sweet talk. I'm here with my lovely co-host Jan, with eating with Jan. As everyone knows, she is a um, ATL foodie activator, and as well as our sweet guest Lauren Bolden with Pie Bar. I am so excited to dive into tonight's discussion. But first, how is everybody? I'm doing great. How about y'all? Good. Doing good. So Jan, I know that last, I mean, last week, or actually two weeks ago, we were diving into rootstock and vine. And now today I'm giving you a mini tour of my sweet savory, my sweet savory spots in Woodstock, like the pie bar. So Lauren, we would love to know more about your savory destination. So I love that. So, and I'm also a big fan of Rootstock and Vine. Uh, they're just a few doors down from us and they're amazing. So if y'all haven't checked them out yet, you definitely should. They have a rooftop bar that when everything kind of gets open back up, you're going to want to spend time there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's great. They do a great job. Um, so we're just down the street from them. We are Pie Bar in downtown Woodstock and we sell pie and that is it. So you can come in for a slice of pie or a whole pie. We do um, sweet pies, about eight flavors a day. We've got Ooh. five staple flavors and then three that are going to rotate seasonally. So for example, right now, our biggest seller, that's our seasonal flavor is our key lime pie. Uh, mm -hmm. People really love that one. And then our biggest seller of our regular pies that we have all the time are our apple streusel pie. So that one's really popular. Um, we say you should have it all the way, which is warm with ice cream, which is pretty good. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> and uh, we do savory take and bake. So you can get a chicken pot pie or a veggie pot pie, or we just did these little shepherd's pies that are so cute. And um, really, we are just excited about being a place in downtown Woodstock. People can um, come to and grab a slice of pie and, and just enjoy themselves. And when did you open again? 2018? Uh, 15, uh, way too long ago. Wait, when? Uh, 15, we are celebrating five oh years. Oh my gosh. Congratulations, that's amazing. That is amazing. People love pie that much that we have been in our space in downtown Woodstock since September of 2015. Um, oh. I'll never forget July 31st, I quit my job. July 31st, 2015, I quit my job. And then the next day I started handing out things to people and my husband Cody was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, here's our opening announcement, September 1st, uh, 20. And he was like, September 1st, what? Like 2016? I was like, no, 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 30 days from now. <laughs> and so we did the construction in 30 days and opened our shop and we'll celebrate five years of business this September 1st. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Yes. It's been really, uh, challenging and fun and exhausting and exciting and uh, very sweet, of course. Well, I so when you're saying challenging, are you saying challenging because of this, the time of like, you know, COVID or just challenging as a whole, all within five, as a whole, five years? Yeah. Like what has been the most challenging points as a whole? Yeah, as a whole. I mean, um, of course, the situation that's going on with COVID is um, a challenge, no matter what. For us, we've been very, very fortunate because the majority of our business, I mean, 80% plus on a normal day was to go. So people already were expecting to come into our shop, grab their slices, and then take it with them. Um, our retail space is like 300 square feet. So there's not a ton of space in there for people to come in and sit down. Um, we always would tell them we're really about creating a moment for you no matter where you are in your day. So you can get a slice of pie or a few slices of pie and take them home and enjoy them like with your loved ones on your couch or at your desk at work the next day. Or um, So it's definitely been a challenge, of course, but I would say just owning a business in general and a food business in general, um, challenges would always crop up. And I've kind of seen different seasons providing different types of challenges. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, when we started Pie Bar, um, I was 25 years old and I had never led anyone before. Like I had never been responsible for telling people this is what we need to do and for setting goals and for um, making sure that we're all in it for the right reasons or, or serving our community in the best way we can. And so leadership was something that was a huge challenge for me. And obviously something like I'm still working on five years later. I don't think you ever officially are like, 
nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And do you, so what led you to open up a pie bar? Like what was your, your aha moment? Reason. So, um, the sweet story is of course, like I worked for, uh, the governor of Georgia right out of college. And so while I was working in his office, people were really generous and would bring him bushels of peaches or a bunch of strawberries. And it's like, what's he going to do with all of these? So I would bake with them and then bring it in for the office because uh, people would love to eat a peach, but they love to eat a peach pie a little bit more. <laughs> and yeah. so that started a lot and, and it just really um, kind of inspired me to want to perfect my pie crust. And then it wanted me um, to, you know, maybe try and sell it to someone. And then I don't know if y'all have ever sold anything, but it is a thrill <laughs> when you make your first sale to somebody you don't know. It was just so exciting. Um, so that's like the, the pretty side of it. The ugly side, I think probably the more real side is I've always been somebody who has tons of passions. I've been somebody who's really into this and then I move on and then really into this and then I move on. And to be very frank, my husband, Cody was like, chill sister, just pick one. You're driving me crazy. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me, I can pick one. And five years later, I'm still <laughs> selling pie. I love this. <laughs> that is a sweet story. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the, the, both sides are very true and were huge impacts in what started Pi Bar. Um, and I think that that's really common for most people. They don't start something just because of one reason. There's all of these reasons that kind of come together. Right. It for, I think it's interesting um, because I was living in Bluestock, Georgia in 2015, rocking and rolling. And I remember you guys opening up and I said, that is so smart, a pie bar. Most people and we literally would get like any special occasion, we would get pies there. I remember that from, at first I thought it was 2017. As I was like, I thought it was 2017. And now I think I met your mom in 2015. I think that's what it was when I went up to the brewery. <laughs> but um, fast forward, I mean, flashback to then when we were, when I would buy pies for like special occasions, like Thanksgiving, like Christmas, birthdays, like you were our sweet spot to go to. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's awesome. Before even meeting you. And this is like our first time really connecting, but like before, like five years ago, like I would always say, go to Pie Bar, go to Pie Bar. It's a sweet spot to go to. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you. We're very, very lucky. Um, not a lot of places could support a place that's like, we do pie. And people are like, do you do like salad with the pie? And we're like, no. <laughs> just pie like truly and uh our community in Woodstock has just really shown up for us I mean every day they come in and they're so excited to enjoy a slice of pie and that's amazing and so thank you for being a customer and thank you for uh kind of cheering us on because it really is I, you know there's only so much I can tell people how great our pie is it takes people like you being able to do it which is awesome yeah amazing you have this lasting impression and you're just as um thrilled and excited even you know five years later and Tia you're not even living here and you know still being so excited about um what uh, what amazing pies are being offered for special occasions or I'm just thinking about people dropping in uh any time of day you know mm -hmm. I mean sometimes you just get a hankering for something sweet but I'm also interested in those savory pies too um chicken pot pie is such a comfort food for me so um, and just, you know, it's one thing to purchase something, you know, frozen or pre-made, but something that's super fresh and, uh, you know, great ingredients would definitely be something nice that I'd like to enjoy. Yeah. You'll have to give them a try. I think a, a big thing is like you just said, pie is so comforting yeah. and a lot of people will come into our store and you can see them like breathe in and they smell all of the butter and the sugar. And then almost immediately somebody will say, oh, this reminds me of my grandma or this reminds me of my mom or my dad. And so for a long time, we couldn't quite figure out how to put that into words. And then finally we sat down and we were like, isn't one of the big cornerstones of our business, these warm memories that people are having. So this comfort feeling, just like you said, um, and, and we always tell people, cause they'll kind of get a little nervous. They'll say like, this was better than, you know, so I'm like, don't, it doesn't matter yeah. if it is better or mine is better because that's not what it's about. It, it's about the fact that you thought of them. You thought right. of your grandmother while you ate this, whether hers is better or mine is better. It doesn't 
matter at all. All that matters is that you're enjoying that one little moment to eat that slice of pie, whether it's uh, a slice of lemon chest pie or a uh, rosemary chicken pot pie, and you're thinking and feeling good thoughts and, and of people you love, which I think is really special. Definitely so. I know I'm feeling good thinking about it. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, I really wish I had a slice of pie right now. Yeah, I'm like, I. what did you say? Going, uh, Doing it all the way with the ice cream and everything? Yeah, we call it all the way. So uh, it's really fun to yell, which is I think why we called it that. So you come in and you order your pie. And so say you had a slice of bourbon chocolate pecan, we would recommend it all the way, which is warm with ice cream. And our regulars, you can tell, because they'll say bourbon chocolate pecan all the way. But people that aren't regulars will say bourbon chocolate pecan and will say, oh, I, you know, would you like to try it warm with ice cream? And they'll say like, you know, eyes growing like, yes. And then it's really fun to turn back and be like, all the way. <laughs> That's cute and memorable too. You know, people will obviously pick up on that and then you'll be able to tell who's been there before and people yeah. will look forward to coming back. Yeah, it's really fun. And another thing that I've noticed over the years, which I feel like it's a big accomplishment, Lauren, is the fact that you guys actually have products that sell at Target. We did sell at Target, yeah. Yes. That was, that, that was um, about now, golly, I guess maybe two years plus ago. So we launched about three years ago our product line under Pie Bar, and uh, it's called Pie Provisions. And I actually have, let's see, so I have a crust next here. Um, we launched a product line under Pie Bar called Pie Provisions, and we were very fortunate that, I mean, our first time on the market, we were able to be picked up by like six local targets. We got picked up by like nine fresh markets, and the Pie Provisions line is made in-house by myself and my husband, Cody, and our team. Um, it is packed by our team. It is uh, labeled by our team. It is sold by our team. I love and this. It, as you can imagine, a uh, outlet like a Target or a Fresh Market may not be super conducive, although amazing, for the size business that we were at at the time. Um, and so we're not in Target currently, but that doesn't mean uh, we won't ever be there again. It just kind of came to a head where it was like, we can't, we can't keep up with this. We can't, we're not able to kind of do this. And um, I've kind of talked about it before in terms of, I'm sure y'all have felt like this at some point in your businesses or your just general lives and probably people watching. I felt like such a loser and like, like, like such a failure that I was like, I had this opportunity. I was in a place like Target and now suddenly I'm not. Like, what does that mean? At that time, it felt awful. But looking back, I'm able to say, well, that just means that we tried something and it didn't work. And our business is still grown, just not that way. So now we're able to serve um, local retailers. We're able to be in your local boutiques where people can go in and uh, meet the owner and find out about our products. Maybe it sells better there and people are able to buy a gift from a local store as opposed to those bigger um, box stores, which again, still love. I can tell you, yes. uh, I mean, they're both, they both companies treated us amazing and kind and generous. and. I mean, just to brag on them a little bit, not very many big box retailers would let somebody like me walk in and move SKUs around. Like that doesn't happen. And they were giving us an opportunity that a lot of people haven't had. Um, and so we would go in and kind of move things around and see, you know, what would work well for the customers. Or, uh, I mean, I remember the, the year that we launched Pie Provisions every weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Cody and I would be in a Target or a Fresh Market, or I mean, we were in these stores trying to sell our product, and I mean, it's just, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm tired now. <laughs> well, you know what I love about this, Lauren, is the fact that you have less than the carbon footprint, which means it's all done in-house. Yeah. So when I'm buying something, just say I order it online and it comes to me, yeah. that means I'm number two, you're number one, I'm number two. Yeah, too. I don't have to worry about the middle or anything like that. I love that. Yeah, it's been really exciting. I mean, so for example, I've got this one here. Um, it's our ginger peach pie filling. Ooh. And I mean, what was really cool about it is uh, we packed it. I mean, my hands like peeled every peach that went into these things. And, I, and I'm not talking like a couple of peaches. Like we did, you know, thousands and thousands of these jars. 
And uh, there's a picture of me, I have to find it, standing beside a pallet of peaches, which is like 50, 60, 70 boxes of peaches, just tons of them. And I'm so excited. I wish Cody had taken a photo of me three days later when I'd finished cutting all of those peaches. Um, but it, they were all from a Georgia farm. So all of our produce in those, like the peach pie, like we're supporting local Georgia farmers. We're purchasing them either directly from the farm or through a farm direct broker, which is really cool. We're able to support them. We're able to process it in house, pack it, and then get it to our local stores, which is exciting. And so, so it's basically fresh to bake. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. It is. Yeah. You just, the fruit ones, you literally open the top and pour it in, um, which is sometimes what people want to do when they're baking I'll be honest I bake a lot so when I get home sometimes I don't want to bake uh, but I'm still like oh I really would love whatever whatever so we'll use these a lot I use them all the time because I can just open it up and dump it and it tastes delicious and I still baked it I just didn't have to do all of the peeling all the peeling and all the flavors and things are right there so you know nicely packaged and I think to your point people like the convenience part of baking I mean I like the idea of, you know, wearing my apron and being in the kitchen and the smells and everything like that, but I'd totally be into something that's already put together and there's step one and there's step two and then there's pie. <laughs> well, and I think the beautiful- And you're still making memories. Right. right. Well, and that's just it is there's no, like, you don't have to choose, right? Like you can do completely from scratch. You can do this and you can be the same person. Right. I think that's what's been really exciting to find is obviously we sell the most pie provisions products in pie bar um, because our guests are coming in and experiencing our pie and then want to create that at home. But it's amazing to me that the same customer that's willing to come in and pay for a slice of pie or a whole pie that's already been made is the exact same customer who, no joke, will send me pictures of pies that they made from scratch. And then also pies that they've made from our pie fillings and pie crust mix because they are a lot of times the same, same person. They're not mutually exclusive, which is really cool. And they're still making memories. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Man, Lauren, you're, you set up a sweet shop. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> wow, you know, and just to think that this is, you know, the brainchild of um, you just really having a passion behind the baking and the appreciation for something that sort of uh, fell in your lap. And then you just, it really seems you just figured out what to do with it, you know, because um, as we can imagine, there's just so much legwork and so much um, pressure behind getting a business started up and following through and still being able to stick to what it is that you care about and what you want to do for people. So um, I truly commend you, you know, for just coming out the gate and following your passion and then just building this amazing thing that you can look back, well, you know, stand back and smell and uh, appreciate. That's incredible. Thank you. And I know tonight you're actually going to make something with us or show us. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be really fun to show y'all how to make a pie crust. Um, uh, when we started Pie Provision, so this, the, the retail line under Pie Bar, the idea was a lot of our guests would come in and enjoy pie. And then sometimes they'd make comments like, oh, I wish I could make pie crust, but it's really hard. Or I'll talk to people all the time that'll say, you know, I can't do it. I always mess it up. And I think a lot of that is just genuinely people have told them for so long it's hard, or maybe they weren't taught the right way the first time. And then it feels frustrating. I have baked thousands and thousands and thousands of pies and sometimes I still mess them up and I think that's okay and I'm excited about the fact that people, especially during this quarantine, are getting back into the kitchen and baking and trying new things and so I thought, well, why not show them how easy and how quick making pie dough is. Um, the beauty of it also is it's a pretty base recipe so you can adjust it a little bit and make other things. So. You can hmm. use a savory pie or a sweet pie. I even use my base recipe for biscuits because it's pretty similar. You're just going to be adding a leavening agent and then maybe buttermilk as opposed to water. Um, so I just thought it'd be fun. And it's a great opportunity to learn something new and something that truly is very simple. Well, so I have my pen and paper, so I'm ready. Except my butter. So I'm going to run and go grab my butter. My fridge is like, three steps that way. I'm going to go grab it. Here, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me go grab the butter. 
Like out in brown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when everything gets better, when I when I fly back down to Georgia or drive back down to Georgia, please leave. You're gonna be one of the first stops I go to. Yay! <laughs> You'll probably have a, um, some kind of cooler so you can stock up. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so the first item to get is butter. When you're baking, unless you are using something where it says in your recipe, salted butter, I always recommend going unsalted butter. What that's going to do is allow you to control the amount of salt going into your product, as opposed to allowing another company to tell you this is how much salt should be in it. Um, because baking is super personal and you're going to maybe want to adjust that a little bit. So we're going to be doing an unsalted butter. Brand wise, I am super cheap. So whatever is at the grocery store and is on sale is what I buy. If you are like, oh no, this pie needs to be hella good. It needs to be the best pie ever. You can do a butter that has a really high um, butter fat, which is gonna be like a Plugra butter or those really high end, nice European butters. A great middle of the road option and actually an option that we use at my pie shop. So at Pie Bar every day, the butter we use is Lando Lakes. We found that it is really consistent. It is uh, relatively affordable and you can find it just about anywhere. So I always recommend them. I think they're a great option, um, especially if you don't wanna go super high end and pay a lot of money for butter. Or if you're like, nah, man, I wanna help myself out. I don't wanna buy the cheap butter like you do. <laughs> Sorry. So. Uh, first things butter. Our next one is going to be our interior ingredients. I'm going to hold this up for a second and then I'll bring it down. So all I've got in here is flour, sugar, and salt. So about two and a half cups of flour. If you can weigh it out even better. If not, don't stress about it. Just fluff it up with your uh, measuring cup. So let's see. I've got one right here. So if you've got it, you're measuring it out. Instead of packing it in tight, you would fluff it up and then measure it out. So about two and a half cups worth. And then I do a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar. All of those things play a really big in component. So with your flour, especially if you're brand new, if you are super new at baking, I recommend using either an all-purpose flour or if you can find it, a pastry flour. So what we actually use in the pie provisions mix, if you were to use this, is a pastry flour because it's really forgiving. So you can accidentally overwork it a little bit. You can add too much water. And because the protein count is so low, all that gluten that's getting activated when you add the water, it's gonna actually be really, really forgiving for you. Mm. If you can't find pastry flour, don't freak out. Just go all purpose, no big deal. The teaspoon of salt is gonna add nice flavor. The sugar, the teaspoon of sugar is gonna help with browning and also just really sciency. Sugar attracts water. And it's going to help make sure we don't overwater or overwork our dough a little bit. So we all good with all of our ingredients. Wait, that's it? That's it. Oh, oh. water. <laughs> I li like literally for a pie dough, it's, I use flour, sugar, salt, butter, and water. That's How it. much water again? So you're going to vary depending if you're doing my recipe here, which is at two and a half cups, a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of uh sugar and two sticks of butter you're gonna hit anywhere between like nine and 12 tablespoons of water so about three quarters of a cup and we'll go through all that the reason i can't tell you it's going to be exactly this amount of water is because it's going to really depend on how cold your butter is it's going to really depend on what kind of flour you use what kind of butter you use all of those things are big big factors um and once you understand the reason why it becomes really simple so all you're doing when you're making pie dough is you're taking your fat, in our case it's butter, you're adding it to your flour, sugar, and salt. We are going to cut that butter up into what I like to call pea-sized bits. So think of literally a pea. We want some a little bit smaller and some a little bit larger. Basically what's happening at that cutting up stage is we're just surrounding all those little butter pieces with flour. We then are gonna add the water. It's just gonna bring it together. And then when we go a couple of hours later to roll it out, and it looks like this, right? So you can see all those butter chunks. What happens is when you roll it out, that butter chunk is encapsulated. It is in between all those flour layers. You stick a really cold pie dough into a really hot oven, your butter evaporates, and that's what gives you the flaky layer, Ooh. right? So think about if you cut your butter too big, you end up with these really large areas 
instead of what feels like a flake, it's just not going to set right. It's going to feel weird in your mouth. And it could even be a little tough and chewy because you're adding too much water to compensate for your butter being so big. If you make your butter too small, it's just going to feel a little sandy, right? Your butter, when it gets in the oven, it evaporates. And those little tiny air pockets are so tiny now, it doesn't feel flaky. It feels sandy. Mm. Not bad, which is fine. You can just tell people that you're fancy in French and that it is a shortbread crust. <laughs> That's what I always tell people. <laughs> so that is literally what you're doing is you are just cutting up butter pieces to the right size, which is pea sized. And you are going to then mix it together with the flour, add in the water, roll it out, and then you're going to create perfect pie. Does that work? Yes. The steps. I'll break it down. Okay. So I'm going to pull the camera away from my face and put it down on my hands. Y'all just yell if you need me to pop back up. And if you can't see anything or hear me, you just yell again. Okay. Definitely. Here we go. All right. Can you see everything? Is it okay? It's perfect. Awesome. Okay. So first thing first is we're going to cut up our butter. So I am just going to open my butter up. I'm going to leave it really cold. As you notice, I left it in the fridge until I was ready to use it because I want really cold butter. Butter has moisture content in it. And if it's too warm, it's going to add all that moisture to my flour. And I want just my, my water to be doing that. All right. So to cut it up, I'm going to use this tool here. It's just a bench scraper is all it is. You can also use a knife, but I like this just because it feels fancy and I feel like a real baker. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so all I'm gonna move this for just a second. All you're gonna do when you're cutting your butter, two sticks wise, is use my, what I like to call my uh, very professional method, which is hot dog, hot dog hamburger. <laughs> we teach all of our baking classes this exact method so that Wait, so you have baking classes too and we do yeah we teach them right now they're kind of on pause um but we do we teach baking classes once a month at our commissary kitchen so i have uh taught lots and lots of pie bakers which is very cool so all you do is you're going to cut it this way here horizontally can y'all see it okay yep that's our hot dog that's our hot dog i'm going to roll it over on its side and I'm gonna do hot dog again. So a second hot dog, boop, and down. So I've got two hot dogs and now my hamburger, I just wanna go ahead and set myself up for success, right? So if I cut it right here, that means I'm gonna have giant pieces of butter that I'm gonna to have to work in with my hand. Instead, I'm gonna do about seven cuts, hamburger style, so vertically, to give me these little pieces of butter this size here. Does that work? Can y'all see it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I go through, got all those cut up. Let's cut up my second one. Same thing. Anywhere really between six and eight cuts is great. I like to say seven. Let's say three, four. I think I'm only going to get five on this one and that's okay. It really is going to be great. So see here, these are a little bit bigger, but it's not a huge deal. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take this butter and add it to my flour mixture. It's the flour, sugar, and salt. I take the butter, drop it right in. Butter, butter, butter. <laughs> Love that butter. Love the butter. Oh man, it's a sickness. Okay. <laughs> so at this point, all I'm gonna do is what's called cutting it in. I can use my hands to do it, or I can use this guy. This is a pastry blender. You can find these at your grocery store. You can find them in antique stores. You can buy them online. The biggest thing is understanding that unless this is a wire version, if it's a metal version, this is nice. So don't ever run your hand down it or try and clean it with your fingers. Make sure you're using a spatula or something else. Does that work? We'll use that in a second. But first, I just want to show you. All I'm going to do is break up that butter. Here it goes. See, I'm breaking it up just carefully and mixing it in with my flour. All right, so if you wanna use your hands, you can. All you have to do is take that butter, you can put it in between here and squish it out. See how it's creating these little flakes? I like to cheat and do like this, which just isn't as pretty, but it feels more comfortable to me. So I'm just kind of breaking it up. If you don't wanna use your hands and you wanna use your pastry blender, you can. There's a couple methods. 
you can do, and I'm gonna turn up the screen just a tiny bit. Okay, so the first method, and you're not gonna be able to quite see the in the bowl, but the main thing here is your arm is to do the corkscrew method. So see how I'm turning my bowl and I'm turning the pastry blender. You can see in my arm how I'm turning it as well. And then let's go down here. I'm pushing the butter into the flour, sugar, salt, and twisting corkscrew. If that does not feel good to you, you can also do the rocking horse. And that is just here. So again, to show you my shoulder, you can see that I'm just leaning forward and rocking back and forth. I'll pull down, there we go and rocking back and forth. The biggest no-no though, because we wanna cut up that butter and make sure that it's cut up pea-sized, we wanna make sure we avoid the chicken scratch, which is this, because you're not actually cutting anything, you're just making a mess at that point. So we wanna go corkscrew, we wanna go rocking horse or in with our hands. Do y'all have any questions up to this point? I do. So. What if we don't have any of that being home, like where I'm at right now, like just being quarantined and not be able to get these tools, right. what else could I use? So you can use two forks. Okay. So if you wanted to use two forks to cut it in this way, I know a lot of ladies back in the day would use two little knives, which is perfectly fine. Um, you can use a food processor if you have one at home. Just make sure that you're not pressing blend, that you are pulsing very carefully. Okay. And I recommend a food processor for your first time only because it's so important that you feel it and you understand that texture um, through your hands before kind of relying on uh, a piece of equipment to do it. Okay. Overall though, your hands. I like when, if I'm making pie or biscuits at home, almost always I go just hands in. I kind of flip it around a little and I break it up. Just each little piece of butter, break it up. I run it through my fingers this way here. I don't know if y'all can hear my husband's in here and he just like popped up in a little bottle of bourbon. <laughs> I do not hear, but I, uh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Come on, Cody. What are you up to? <laughs> all right, so you can see all I'm doing is just using my hands to break it up. So I'm gonna try and show you an example. So like these pieces of butter are still a little too large, right? Whereas these are perfect. These are pea size, some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit larger. So this is why I don't recommend necessarily using a pastry or not a pastry blender, which that too, but uh, equipment for the first time, because you wouldn't know that unless you were feeling it with your hands. So when your hands are in there, you can feel those larger chunks and you can just go in and break them up very quickly. So I just break them all up. And then I would say, I'm pretty much there. I'd break up that one, but you want that butter to be visible. I want to be able to see that there's butter in there. So bring it here. Can y'all see that okay? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're really looking for is that shaggy consistency. We want it to be, let me get all that flour off. Um, we don't want it to be homogenous. We don't want it to look like a big yellow blob or anything like that. That means your butter's getting a little too warm and you've cut it up too much. We want it to look like there are chunks of butter in flour, sugar, and salt. Good? Yeah. yeah. So that is what we call cutting in the butter. The next step is adding water. So normally what I would recommend is say, I would put this in my refrigerator or my freezer for a few minutes, kind of get that butter back tightened up and getting really cold. Because if you remember back to what I said at the very beginning was we want to put cold pie dough. We want that butter mm -hmm. to be cold going into a hot oven. So it'll evaporate and leave our flake. So if we were letting it sit out for a long time, your butter is going to melt because that's normal and natural. And then it's going to get into your flour and you're not going to have butter chunks. You're just going to have kind of like a sticky, stirry mess. Does that work? Yeah. All right. So the next step though, because this is television, uh, it's, we're just going to go ahead and add the water. <laughs> it is what it is, right? All Real right. and live. Right. All right. So we're going to go back down. Okay. Can y'all see it all okay? Yeah. We're all comfortable here. Oh, let me back up a little bit. Sorry. I'll up on my box. Okay. All I have here is tap water. I put a little ice in it before we came on to make sure that it was really cold. No need for any fancy water and definitely don't use carbonated water. 
We just want straight up tap water. Um, or sometimes if you're in a pinch and if you don't have clean tap water, you can use bottled water, but like plain water, nothing in it. Does that work? All right, so when you're first starting, you're gonna wanna use a tablespoon. I get really annoyed by using just a tablespoon. So I'm gonna use a quarter cup. I know that a quarter cup is four tablespoons. So I'm gonna go about halfway full. So I know that that's about two tablespoons. When I add my water in, I'm not just gonna dump it in the center. If you were making biscuits, that's where things can start to vary. You would pour all of your buttermilk in all at once. And you'd have a big puddle of buttermilk and then would mix it in. With pie dough, we wanna add as little water as possible to make it come together. So we're gonna be very careful when we add our water. So I'm gonna start with two tablespoons. I'm gonna do it in a circle fashion. And then I'm just gonna go in with my hands again and move it around very quickly. I'm just flipping that dough around and incorporating that water. If you don't like how this feels on your hands, you can use a spatula as well. When we make pie dough at pie bar, um, we're doing lots and lots at a time, but we still do this part by hand because I think it's pretty important. I think that this is what gives us that really flaky pie crust. All right, so I'm gonna do another two. So now we're at four tablespoons all together. And again, kind of going back in there, flipping it around. I can start to feel that there's moisture in here. I don't know if y'all can see that quite at home, but it is definitely still dry. It's not like ready to go or anything like that. I'm gonna turn my bowl, because why work harder than I have to? Turn the bowl and let it work for me. So all you're seeing here with my fingers is I'm literally just breaking it up. I just want that butter to be surrounded by flour and that flour to be just moistened by the liquid. Good? All right, we're gonna go again. So we are at four. I am gonna do another two. That's gonna put us at six. Same thing, mixing together. Now you can start to see it's starting to come together. It's starting to stick to my fingers a little bit. So I'm gonna get it off my fingers. And it's definitely getting closer, but I know for myself that six tablespoons is not gonna be enough just mm. because I can feel a lot of dry spots. It feels moist, but not wet, but it still also feels dry in places. So I'm mixing all that water, breaking it all up, flipping it around. All right, we're gonna do some more. We're gonna do two more tablespoons. And this is gonna put us at eight. So we're gonna flip it, here we go. All right, so now you can see how it's starting to form little dough balls, right? So after I get that last little bit mixed in, I'm gonna check it and see if it's ready for me to make a dough ball. I think it is. So see how it's starting to kind of come together. It's pretty shaggy. Let me see how close I can get. Okay. okay. Is it clear on the screen? It is. Okay. So see how you've got these larger chunks. You still got some fine chunks here, but they look moist. They don't look dry. If they are a little too dry, you can also, if you're um, able to just take your fingers in there. If you know you don't need to add very much more, you can sprinkle it right in there. Tiny little bit. And I'd say we're just about perfect. So we were at eight tablespoons on mine, roughly eight tablespoons, because I used the quarter cup, right? And I, I just did a half a quarter cup and then a sprinkle. So to check it now, I want to see if I can make two dough balls with this recipe. I don't want to squeeze them so tight that all of that work I did is just lost because my hand warmth squeezes it so tight that I'm packing it so tight that the butter starts to melt. I want to think about hot potato. So I'm gonna bring it together and I'm gonna hot potato it. And notice how it's staying together, but it's still a little craggly. And then when I open it, it still is flaky. See how it's flaking off still? That is perfect. That is what we want. So what I'm gonna do now is just by sight, same thing at home. If you have a scale and you're really particular, you can do it where you weigh it out. But essentially all I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna set this one to the side is make my two dough balls. So I'm gonna go here. Again, hot potatoing them together. I don't wanna diamond press them. All right. You said diamond press them? I don't wanna diamond press them. So I don't wanna do, if I'm holding it here and pushing so tight, you can see my knuckles going white. Got it. How hard I'm working here. 
but it's see how it left my hand imprints on there mm. don't want that we just want to carefully put it together so there we go kind of just hot potatoing it back and forth until you have no more dough left so after you get your two dough balls the next big thing that you want to do, I'm going to go up here. The next big thing you want to do is just wrap them in plastic wrap. A lot of people are like, great, let's roll it out. And I always remind them, let it rest. With my recipe, I recommend two hours minimum. What's going to happen is you're adding all that water. When you added that water, all the gluten inside, right? People talk about being gluten-free. Well, flour, what's happening is all of that water is activating the gluten inside the flour and it is going nuts. It's like, I'm pissed. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to cause a scene. And that's what's going to give you tough dough. So if we can wrap it, after I wrap this dough ball, I would press it into a little patty, put it right in my fridge, and that gluten is going to chill out. It's going to let it calm down a little. It's going to let it um, lose a little bit of that flare so that when I go to roll it out, it's not all upset and, and springing back on me. It rolls out smooth and nice. Yeah? Yeah. That was impressive. Well, you can do it. I know. I'm like, this is girls' know. night out pie style. Pie style. No, you can do it. I love it. Well, so it genuinely is that easy. This is one that our team made today. So all you would do at this point is let it stay in your refrigerator, two hours minimum. I can keep it in my fridge. I'll do it three, four days. Some people usually say like, ah, eh, four days after that. It really depends on the kind of flour you use. So if you're using um, like a pie provisions, I would say two to three days because it's an organic pastry flour. There's no preservatives in it. So there's nothing keeping it like, like this, you know, whereas like if you're using something Thing that has a bleached flour, it can last for a little bit longer. Mm. That way you can then roll it out and make a pie. You can also freeze this. So let's say you made these and you're not ready to make a pie. No big deal. Stick this in a Ziploc bag, pop it in your freezer. And then if you're like, I'm going to make a pie tomorrow, take it out of the freezer and defrost it in your fridge and then proceed like normal. Mm. And there you go. You've got pie dough. Wow. And that's it. It's that super was so fast but so like I'm just sitting here I'm like wow this is great like I'm the type of person that would watch YouTube videos of making something and just oh, okay and take notes which is good because I was nervous like oh my gosh this is so boring you're not no way too long <laughs> no like I'm so thrilled that it's so easy you know I mean relatively in the sense that the ingredients you didn't need a whole bunch of stuff um, but it's all about the technique, which I think is what people have to key in on. Exactly. Well, and what's fun with pie is you do not need any special equipment ever. Yeah. I have rolled out pie dough with wine bottles. <laughs> I had a demo. Nobody ate this pie, thankfully, but I had a demo in Texas one time and had to show it was like 200 women how to roll out dough and I had to have my example pie you know before and I realized I had forgot my rolling pin and I used like a broom handle that I found in my Airbnb uh, I mean you can really use any wow so you don't have to have that bench scraper or that pastry blender you don't have to have fancy stuff special ingredients you can do uh table salt you can do all-purpose flour of course, there's always ways to elevate that if you're yeah. like, oh, I've got the basics, like I'm ready to move up now. Um, but you don't have to use that as a crux to say, I can't do this because I don't have all of these things. No, we don't. You don't need all of those things. Have you thought of take, doing virtual classes, like virtual bake classes? Are We are working on it. And I'll be okay. honest with you, I have been working on this class for a long time. Uh, I don't know if you are... <laughs> the type of person that's like, I need to do this and I get it to do it, you know, that, that kind of thing. And then you're like, oh no, I don't want to work on this today. So I have finally passed it off. Uh, I was just like, I, this will never get done. So our shop manager, Vivian is amazing. And the girl knows how to check things off of a to-do list. Yes. And so I have been pushing off. We've like, I've created the teachable account. I have like started, I mean, I've got the entire, we did a test batch. Uh, a test class with like 10 of our, our uh, guests and they gave me all this feedback and then I just couldn't ever sit my butt in a chair and like put it down on paper. So Vivian was like, okay, let me handle this. So hopefully she told me 30 days. 
So we'll see. Ooh, yeah. You have to let me know. Yeah, which is cool. Cody, will, uh, my husband was like, who's going to film it? And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you. You. So, he's been practicing. If you hear, I can show you kind of our kitchen a little bit. I've got this light. He feels like it's very important. So we'll be using yes, the softbox. Yes, oh, fancy. Uh, but we'll film them right here, which is really cool. So we'll do the class this year, and hopefully in the next 30 days or so, it'll go live. Oh, my God. You have to keep me in the loop on that one. Because I will go to that class. I'll have everything laid out. And I'm like, I'm ready to rock and roll. And ready I- to rock and roll? <laughs> you, can kind of- Literally. you can keep me accountable then. Because if not, I will not do it. <laughs> oh, I will be reaching out to you on May 21st. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm ready to enroll. <laughs> I love that. Well, are there? But, oh, go ahead. So, since I'm in, I'm in, like oh, in New York. Am mm-hmm. I able to order? Like, just say I go on your website. I'm like, I would like a pie filling, and I want um, this, and I can order this like tonight. Yes. So we sell both on Pie Bar's website and Pie Provisions website. Yeah. Pie Bar is our shop. You go in, you buy pie. Pie Provisions is literally just us same people, just a retail line underneath Pi Bar. So you're going to get the same experience either way. It just really depends on whether you find us on Google through Pi Bar, through Pi Provisions. Um, but you can get the Crest Mix, which has what I just told you. So it's got the flour, sugar, salt, um, or you can go out and buy flour, sugar, salt. It's really up to you. I always recommend this for new bakers just because we are using a pastry flour. And sometimes that's a little challenging to source uh, unless you're in a bigger city. So in New York on a normal day, just about any of your like upscale stores would have a pastry flour. In New York during a quarantine, you probably will not be able to get pastry flour. Um, And then right now, I think what we've got filling wise is ginger peach, which is my favorite. We've got blueberry, uh, which won first place in the confections division of the Flavor of Georgia contest last year. So that was really exciting. Uh, And then bourbon pecan. And that one is for people that want to do maybe a little more hands-on. So that one, you add eggs and butter to your filling as well. So there's kind of steps, you know, you can do either just open and pour or kind of mix a little and pour. She's taking notes. Yes, I am. I love it. <laughs> Great student. I love it. Great. Are there any questions in terms of like, I love the question about tools because you don't have to have fancy tools. Are there any questions in terms of um, like ingredients or sourcing or um, really like anything like that? I'm happy to answer it for y'all. I mean, it sounds like Channel, you, you go first. I was I was just gonna say it sounds like you guys have um, a bunch of really neat flavor options. Um, you know, you definitely described all of those. So um, I don't think I have any more questions. I mean, I was really interested in your in your background and just how you came to be. But um, it also seems like you've given a lot of thought to the options and the different types of pies that are available too. So yeah, well, and I had to go and check out the full menu and see what you could come home with, you know? Yeah, well, we'd love for you to come by the store. I would still love for you to bake at home. Uh, Don't feel boxed in. You can not use our stuff at all and just go, we've got recipes on our website. So for example, our strawberry rhubarb pie is very popular, but we can't offer it in stores. to be frank, it's an expensive pie to make on the scale of what we're making. Uh, and rhubarb is difficult to source and strawberries mold very quickly. And there, there's just all these yeah. factors that make it a challenging pie for us to make and sell. And so I thought, well, why don't we release that recipe so people can still enjoy it and they can make it at home. And it's very simple. It is a super easy pie. Um, another one is a cherry pie. A lot of people love cherry pie and cherries can be difficult to source a lot of times on our scale. You can go to Kroger and buy a bag of frozen cherries, fine, but it's just not possible for us on the amount of cherries that we need. And so we thought, well, why don't we teach people how to make this? And then they can enjoy that at home. Again, a super simple recipe. Um, I think the filling ingredients were like cherries, uh, tapioca or cornstarch, some almond extract, a little bit of sugar. And if you want to add a little bit of orange or lemon, so like less than five ingredients, it's super simple and it tastes really great. <laughs> That's fine. You have to write it down. There is on the website. You know, you can print it out. <laughs> yeah. 
and I have recipe cards. So I'm like, all right, what else did she say? Well, and what's funny is you don't have to be with fruit pies. You want to um, maybe not experiment so much with the amount of tapioca or cornstarch, especially if it's a well-tested recipe, but you can experiment with other things. So um, for example, I did the cherry pie. I taught Atlanta and company. I was on there and did a segment and taught people how to make cherry pie. And mm. Christine, the host was like, Love her. she's so fun. And yeah. it was so funny to me. She said, why did you use orange in this pie? And I was like, well, because that's what I had at home. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because I came here from home and I had oranges, not lemons or limes or, you know, to me, it's just, that's the beauty of pie is, um, say there's a citrus component, you can play around with that. You don't have to follow things so specifically that you feel boxed in, which I think sometimes with baking, a lot of people can feel that way. I love the fact that you always think outside of the box, like from the very beginning, from first creating a pie bar, all things pie, and then creating a way for your guests to have a takeaway so they can have that experience and then having bake classes and I mean Lauren you're building a sweet empire filled of all things memory memories and you're bringing people together that's what I remember like dessert time it's either romantic or family affair or even just at home watching binge watching your favorite show yeah having your favorite dessert, just sitting there. Just, mm-hmm. It's comfort food. Yeah. yeah. Definitely comfort food. Thank you. And with that being said, being comfort food, um, have you guys done anything with like the local like first responders or frontliners, um, yeah. like gifting pies, like, or if any way that we can do that, like how can we? Thank you. Well, what we've been really fortunate about out is our guests have come to us and said, we want to support y'all because you're a local business and we know, and we can see the people that you're employing. How can we help our first responders? How can we help maybe some people in the community who don't have access to go to the grocery store? Um, how can we be helpful to both you and them simultaneously? And so it's been amazing because so for example, we'll have people that'll call and say, Hey, I want to buy pie for the fire department down the street. Or um, we had a, a apartment complex behind us that's so generous. Walton. They call us, yes, Woodstock Walls by Walton. And they've done this with multiple small businesses in our community. I know we're not the only ones. I've actually spoken with other business owners where they will call up and they'll say, hey, I've got a hundred residents I want to treat because maybe they don't have access to going out to a grocery store. Maybe they're going to be in a little bit of a risk factor based on their age or their health. What can you do for them? And so I know of a company that's doing coffee for them. They reached out to us and they were able to support us by saying like, we're, I think a lot of times people are afraid to say this, but they were like, we're willing to pay for this product. We want as a a company that is bigger and better prepared for this kind of situation. We want to support you as a small business and your employees. Can we pay you for this product that then we give away to Mm -hmm. our residents? And that to me is so tremendous because it's, it is very heartwarming to understand that these larger businesses are able to look at us as smaller businesses and say like, we got you. We were there one time. We understand that a situation like this isn't an issue of like, okay, we'll furlough people and come back. A situation like this for small businesses is like, if you can't get through this, you won't make payroll and you won't have employees and you won't open your doors again. And um, that's been, I think the, the, most outstanding part is the support we've seen from other local businesses and local community members really recognizing that and supporting us as they support other people. For sure. Love that. And that's why we're calling the Savor Local Eateries because yeah. you're savoring up your saving. Like it's time for us to save our local eateries at this time, but also how can we rise up together as a community and like give to you, but also give to like first responders. So we pay we like gift it to them. So, all right, let's get a pilot, but let's go ahead and give it to the fire chief or let's go ahead and give it to Cherokee Northside Hospital right? or, or a pharmacist or someone that's been working at the grocery store, your UPS man. Right. Um, there's so many ways of saying thank you. Yeah. And the great taste. So true. And it's, I think what's really amazing about that is again, like the, the small business level at our size business, we're not in a situation where we're like, yeah rolling it in right like it genuinely is when when um 
we gift pie, which we do a lot in terms of donation requests, but also just we love giving away pie to all of our local waiters and wait staff. And I, we give out pie a lot. But when we do that, we know like, well, that's money that we weren't able to make to literally pay payroll or to buy groceries or, you know, you in a small business, you can really see that line being connected super simply. And um, it's just really amazing that there are so many people out there that are saying like, hey, we're in a position where we can help you because we were you. And the fact that they are helping is is huge. It's really that's just so beautiful. It is. And, and because of it, um, we had to put pause on a couple of our part timers, but all of our full-timers have stayed with us full-time, um, which was something that six weeks ago, I didn't know. Like I, six weeks ago, the question was, are we gonna have to lay everyone off? Is this just gonna be Cody and I and maybe one or two more people? Um, and because of that generosity, we've been able to keep all of our, our full-time team members employed and working, which is really amazing. And how could everyone continue to help you at this time? Yeah. And, and as silly or as simple as it sounds, it's literally, it's by pie. I, I mean, truly, because the, the pie that we're making and people are buying, those dollars are going back to pay our employees, to pay our rent, to not, not my rent, but like, you know, yes, not, yeah, yeah. But like there, it, it's paying for us to be a part of the community so that when all of this is over, we're able to get back into being that place in our community that we are able to give back and that we are able to create a space for people to come in and feel comfortable and um, feel welcomed. I think one of our, our most amazing and successful give back campaigns that we did was back last summer in June. And I'm hoping we'll be able, as long as everything progresses um, in a positive way to do it again. And it was our 30 days of kindness initiative. Ooh. A lot of businesses have done it. And it was a really cool opportunity for us as a team to give back to our community for 30 days straight. So we give back to our community uh, on a monthly basis in certain ways, but this was a literally like butts in seats were given back for 30 days. And um, it was really tremendous. It, some of them were bigger things. Some of them were smaller things, but all of them were with other people on the forefront of our minds when we did them. And it was amazing. And so my hope is that this June we'll be able to, to do that again. So that'll be exciting. Well, I'm definitely excited for things to come just to let you know. And I'm so impressed by everything um, that you shared today and uh, happy that we could connect and uh, to learn more about what's going on at the pie bar. Thank you. I appreciate y'all having me. This is fun. And I hope you go bake a pie. Uh, definitely going to buy a pie tonight. Yeah. <laughs> like ship it off. Um, <laughs> but also when things are better and we're able to go out, like my film crew is in Atlanta. So when I go to Atlanta, like I love for us to go and sit there and just like be there, be present and savor the pies with you in person. I would love that. And Dan, I have you. definitely want you to be there to savor away with us. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us today. Well, of course. And until next time, everyone, just please make sure you like Pie Bar. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. Um, check out their website. And really show your support that way because again, like as you heard, or like this is our time to save our, our small businesses and just giving back. So until next time, please stay home wherever you are, stay safe and savor away, everyone. Bye.